Section 2 of Aids to Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Avai in November 2009. Aids to Forensic Medicine and Toxicology by W. G. Etchison Robertson. Section 2. Chapter 6 signs of death one cadaveric appearance ashy white color two cessation of the circulation and respiration no sound being heard by the stethoscope cessation of the circulation may be determined by a placing a ligature around the base of a finger magnus test b injecting a solution of fluorescin eichardt's test c looking through the web of the fingers at a bright light diaphanous test d the dulling of a steel needle when thrust into the living body e the clear outline of the dead heart when viewed in the fluorescent screen three the state of the eye the tension is at once lost iris insensible to light fundus yellow in color cornea dull and sunken four the state of the skin pale livid with loss of elasticity five extinction of muscular irritability the above signs afford no means of determining how long life has been extinct the following however do cooling of the body the average internal temperature of the body is from ninety eight to one hundred degrees fahrenheit the time taken in cooling is from fifteen to twenty hours but it may be modified by the kind of death, the age of the person, the presence or absence of clothing on the body, the surrounding temperature, and the stillness or otherwise of the air about the body. Still, the body, other things being equal, may be said to be quite cold in about twelve hours. Hypostasis or post-mortem staining is due to the settling down of the blood in the most dependent parts of the body while the body is cooling. It is a sure sign of death, and occurs in all forms of death, even in that due to hemorrhage, although not so marked in degree. Post-mortem staining, cadaveric lividity, begins to appear in from eight to twelve hours after death, and its position on the body will help to determine the length of time the body has lain in the position in which it was found. The staining is of a dull red or slaty blue color. It must be distinguished from ecchymosis, the result of a bruise, by making an incision into the part. In the case of hypostasis, a few small bloody points of divided arteries will be seen. In the case of ecchymosis, the subcutaneous tissues are infiltrated with blood clot. Internally, hypostasis must not be mistaken for congestion of the brain or lungs, or the results of inflammation of the intestines. If the intestine is pulled straight, inflammatory redness is continuous, hypostasis is disconnected. About the neck hypostasis must not be mistaken for the mark of a cord or other ligature. When the blood is of a bright red color after death, as happens in poisoning by carbon monoxide or hydrogen cyanide, or in death from cold, the hypostasis is bright red also. Cadaveric rigidity, rigor mortis. For some time after death, the muscles continue to contract under stimuli. When this irritability ceases, and it seldom exceeds two hours, rigidity and hardening sets in, and in all cases precedes putrefaction. It is caused by the coagulation of the muscle plasma. It commences in the muscles of the back of the neck and lower jaw, and then passes into the muscles of the face, front of the neck, chest, upper extremities, and lastly to the lower extremities. It has been noticed in the newborn infant as well as in the fetus. It lasts from sixteen to twenty hours or more. In lingering diseases, after violent exertion and in warm climates, it sets in quickly and disappears in two or three hours. In those who are in perfect health and die from accident or asphyxia, it may not come on until from ten to twenty-four hours, and may last three or four days. After death from convulsions or strychnine poisoning, the body may pass at once into rigor mortis. Rigor mortis must be distinguished from cadaveric spasm or the death clutch. 
in the former articles in the hands are readily removable in the latter this is not the case in tetanic spasm the limbs when bent return to their former position not so in rigor mortis putrefaction appears in from one to three days after death as a greenish blue discoloration of the abdomen in the drowned over the head and face this increases becomes darker and more general a strong putrefactive odor is developed the thorax and abdomen become distended with gas and the epidermis peels off the muscles then become pulpy and assume a dark greenish color the whole body at length becoming changed into a soft semi-fluid mass the organ first showing the putrefactive change is the trachea that which resists putrefaction longest is the uterus these putrefactive changes are modified by the fat or lean condition of the body the temperature putrefaction takes place more rapidly in summer than in winter excess of air the period place mode of interment age etc bodies which remain in water putrefy more slowly than those in air saponification in bodies which are very fat and have lain in water or moist soil for from one to three years this process takes place the fat uniting with the ammonia given off by the decomposition to form adiposary this consists of a margarate or stearate of ammonium with lime oxide of iron potash certain fatty acids and a yellowish odorous matter it has a fatty unctuous feel is either pure white or pale yellow with an odor of decayed cheese small portions of the body may show signs of this change in six weeks post-mortem examination never make an autopsy in criminal cases without a written order from the coroner or procurator fiscal if authorized however first have the body identified then photographed if it has not been identified a medical man representing the accused may be present but only by consent of the crown authorities or of the sheriff clothing should be examined for blood stains cuts etc examine external surface of body and take accurate measurements of wounds marks deformities tattooings note degree and distribution of post-mortem staining rigidity etc examine brain by making incision from ear to ear across vertex reflect scalp forwards and backwards and saw of calvarium examine brain carefully externally and on section examine organs of chest and abdomen through an incision made from symphysis menti to pubis reflecting tissues from chest wall and cutting through costal cartilages in cases of suspected poisoning have several clean jars into which you place the stomach with contents intestines with contents piece of liver kidney spleen etc and seal each up carefully attaching label with name of diseased date and contained organs and transmit these personally to the analyst exhumation a body which has been buried cannot be exhumed without an order from a coroner fiscal or from the home secretary there is no legal limit in england as to when a body may be exhumed in scotland however if an interval of twenty years has elapsed an accused person cannot be prosecuted prescription of crime chapter seven death from anaesthetics etc the coroner in england and wales and ireland must inquire into every case of death during the administration of an anaesthetic the anaesthetist has to appear at the inquest and must answer a long series of questions relative to the administration of the drug before therefore giving an anaesthetic and so as to furnish yourself with a proper defence in the event of death occurring you ought to examine the heart lungs and kidneys of the patient to see if they are healthy should a fatal result follow the anaesthetist will require to prove that it was necessary to give the anaesthetic that the one employed was the most suitable that the patient was in a fit state of health to have it administered that it was given skilfully and in moderate amount that he had the usual remedies at hand in case of failure of the heart or lungs and that he employed every means in his power to resuscitate the patient the condition of the lungs is of more importance than the state of the heart 
the chloroformist ought always to use the best chloroform. An anesthetic should never be administered except in the presence of a third person. This applies especially to dentists who give gas to females. Malpractice In every case where a medical man attends a patient, he must give him that amount of care, skill, knowledge or judgment that the law expects of him. If he does not, then the charge of malpractice may be brought against him. It is most frequently alleged in connection with surgical affections, that is, overlooking a fracture or dislocation. Before a major operation is performed, it is well to get a written agreement. Chapter 8. Presumption of Death, Survivorship Presumption of Death if a person be unheard of for seven years, the court may, on application by the nearest relative, presume death to have taken place. If, however, it can be shown that in all probability death had occurred in a certain accident or shipwreck, the decree may be made much earlier. Presumption of survivorship when two or more related persons perish in a common accident, it may be necessary, in order to decide questions of succession, to determine which of them died first. It is generally accepted that the stronger and more vigorous will survive longest. Chapter 9 Assault, Murder, Manslaughter, etc. Assault this is an attempt or offer to do violence to another person. It is not necessary that actual injury has been done, but evil intention must be proved. When a corporal hurt has been sustained, then assault and battery has been committed. The assault may be aggravated by the use of weapons, etc. Homicide may be justifiable, as in the case of judicial execution, or excusable, as in defense of one's family or property. Felonious homicide is murder. This means that a human being has been killed by another maliciously and deliberately, or with reckless disregard of consequences. Manslaughter or culpable homicide, Scotland, is the unlawful killing of a human being without malice, as homicide after great provocation, signalman who allows a train to pass and so collide with another in front. End of section 2